the greatest joy and happiness that one gets introduced is to be called as a sai student we used to make frequent trips to mudanelli until one blessed day swami called us here and blessed us to serve his students at his institution during the course of the fire crack fire crackers display some of the crackers came little closer to the area where swami and students were seated and then as he was going back he looked at the students and asked them what if it would have fallen on you the students replied swami you are there i offer my reverential pranams at the lotus feet of bhagwan shri satya sai baba and sadguru shri madhusudan sai respected elders dear sisters and brothers and swami's dearest students sai ram to you before i begin my talk i invoke a prayer from the rigveda which goes thus ano bhadra kratvo yantu vishvatah which means may noble thoughts come to us from all directions i am happy and thankful to the student brother who gave a nice introduction about me but the greatest joy and happiness that one gets introduced is to be called as a sai student because i firmly believe that being in swami's organization the highest qualification one could attain is to be called as a sai student by the grace of almighty and with the blessings of my parents i was fortunate to have studied at the shri satya sai institute of higher learning brindavan campus and prashant nilayam campus revered murthy anna was our warden at brindavan and throughout my stay at brindavan and parthi as students as student many elderly people many elderly persons great devotees all my professors and lecturers they were constantly inspiring us to develop love and to have a unique special bond with swami which helped me having seen swami at brindavan and parthi and now having seen swami at mudanelli i am extremely indebted to him for his love and compassion he was compassionate enough to accept me into the current mission though i did not know about mudanelli before coming here i did not know about the tyagajeevis and the sacrifices they made in building these institutions nor i did not know about pooja madial narayan bhattanna and his vision in molding india i am thankful to swami for giving this opportunity and accepting me here and who is blessing me i feel he is blessing me he is blessing each and every one of us to to be part of his mission and he is working through us for this mission the first time i had visited satya sai grama was in the month of december 2014 this happened through the intervention of a senior colleague of mine at parthi whom i revere as my elder brother and my mentor since then we used to make frequent trips to mudanelli until one blessed day swami called us here and blessed us to serve his students at his institution 
being at campus and serving swami students taught me many valuable lessons and i took every possible opportunity to serve the students so that through them i serve swami speaking about swami and his students i would like to narrate with you all one incident that happened almost 8 years ago but it stayed very fresh in my memory that taught me the kind of love that is shared between the lord and his children whether it was brindavan or parthi or mudanelli this incident happened on the day of 91st birthday celebrations of bhagwan shri satya sai baba as it was the practice then after the evening cultural program at premamrita auditorium swami would go back to his mandir and he would witness the great fire display the firecrackers display that was arranged and then he would retire for the day so on this particular day this was the 23rd of november 2016 swami returned back to the mandir after attending the evening program at premamritam as swami got down the car many students were lined up on either sides of the carpet waiting to receive swami and witness the great the grand display swami blessed everyone and was seated on the throne on the balcony of anandam and the display began during the course of the fire crack fire crackers display some of the crackers came little closer to the area where swami and students were seated however things went on very well and all were excited so after the display swami started walking back to his residence and then as he was going back he looked at the students and asked them what if it would have fallen on you the students replied swami you are there meaning they were not tensed up because swami is there in case something would have happened swami is there to protect and bless them swami was happy with the answer and then swami asked again what if it would have fallen on me this was the question that swami had asked and very spontaneously in one single voice all the students replied swami we are there swami was very happy with the answer he blessed everyone and retired i was lucky enough to witness this beautiful sweet incident that happened on that wonderful evening and as i came back i was contemplating on this particular incident and as i was contemplating on this incident i was reminded of a similar incident that comes in shrimad bhagavatam where gopikas expressed their pure innocent love and devotion to lord krishna by giving the dust of their feet to cure his headache i could conclude and thus correlate draw a correlation between both the incidents let me explain a bit when swami asked what if it would have fallen on me the students did not think how can it fall on swami the students did not think is swami operating from daiva pragna or jiva pragna the students did not think is swami joking or is he speaking normally the students did not even think how can we normal students help swami the divine there was no idle curiosity or jignasa there but one could see the pure love and innocent love that swami and his uh, the students of swami had on him as they uttered swami we are there this incident taught me what it means to love swami and till date the incident remains very fresh in my memory 
and I'm thankful to Swami for giving an opportunity to witness this incident. Whenever Swami said, I'm very happy and confident about my students leading the mission, all of us used to listen to those words and we used to feel happy. But today, when I'm on this side of the stage and I see the army of men in white in front of me, I can literally feel how Swami has great confidence on His students whom He prepared for ages in order to solve the problems of the world. I am really grateful to Swami who gave so much of love and He is constantly blessing all of us. We don't know what punyam we did, we don't know what little good things we did. But all that is making the mission move forward is only the goodness and the God in that, that lies in the goodness. Initially when I was posted, when I was deputed to Jaipura campus, I used to think how can I run day-to-day -day affairs there, how, how, I, how will I be able to deal the situations there. One day I was, sit, I was seated in Swami's room and I was con contemplating for a solution and then it occurred to me that as long as I preserve my goodness and purity in thoughts, words and actions, it is that goodness and the God who lies in that goodness who runs the campuses and not me. This learning is helping me all through. I would like to end my talk with a gentle request to all the student brothers. It's the greatest blessing to be a Swami student and work for Him. I urge each and every one of you to have, to develop a personal connect with Swami and have a strong bond with Him internally. This relationship need not be spoken externally nor disclosed to anyone, but this must be preserved, protected and nurtured very carefully so that when Swami chooses us for a specific task, the first words that come out of our mouth should be, Yes, Swami. I conclude my talk with a Subhashita which comes from the famous episode of Yaksha Prashna in Mahabharata. Tarko apratishtaha shrutayo vibhinnaha naiko muniryasya matam pramanam dharmasya tatvam nihitam guhayam mahajano yena gatasa panthaha. The meaning of this shloka is in order to decide what is good or what is bad, logical reasoning seems unstable and weak. Simply by mere study of the various methods proclaimed by Vedas, one cannot follow the right path by which the religious principles are understood. Even rishis will have their own opinion in explaining the subtler concepts of dharma. The philosophy of dharma, that is, the truth of religious principles are hidden in the heart of a self-realized person and are generally difficult to understand. Thus, the path taken by the realized men is indeed accepted as the right path. May we all follow the footsteps of our Sadhguru who is showing us the right way and may we all reach the ultimate. There is no other way for our redemption except to hold on to the feet of our dearest Lord. Nanyaf Pantha Ayanaya Vidyate With these words, I conclude my talk by expressing gratitude to Swami and thanking the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Sairam, thank you. <laughs>